part two. So main thing I did to speed up a little bit of time is did chassis mounts. So that way we can do chassis to chassis. We don't have to worry about how it's mounted. Just put screws through all that, trim it down some. Another thing I did was I noticed this was a little bit too flimsy. So I'm in the process of bracing this. Now it's much more stable and I'll probably end up putting a cross brace um, through these two pieces of hardware as well. As you can see, the gear reduction unit's not in the back anymore. It's sunken down into the chassis with pretty much a backbone to hold it in place. And also, I have little brackets holding down the gear reduction unit. And I have a little bracket built keeping the twine on. I'm using 15 pound test fishing string and I think that should be plenty. I'd say I got about three feet of it. I just put it in a knot. And I think that would be enough to pull something out without getting myself in the muck. Uh, if we need more, we can add more later. I just did a knot and then super glued it to the pulley. We get the tool to take this horn off. We're gonna dig in here. And our goal is to turn this into this. Let's get started on that. So if you have a junk servo lying around, go grab it. All right, so now that we got the servo horn off, we can slide that off, slide all the gears off. Just throw that stuff all around. And then, so right there you can see the potentiometer and the motor. And then this one, since it's not super glued, moves. And this is how we're going to find neutral. Don't use metal. Use like a pencil or something. Or else it'll mess with it. You want to find neutral. Once you find neutral, double check, triple check, because it's like a weld. We're going to super glue this in place. Unless you want to keep it open, you can have a switch on the side of your RC car and you with your hand can always control what it's doing and put it back to neutral yourself but me I like super gluing this in neutral and when you plug this into the third channel like I said before you can control it so these are actually quite difficult to take apart which is why I resulted to cutting it down the side so what I'm gonna do so I don't rip the circuit board out or break the wires is unsolder the motor and then go from there all right so you can see that both of those wires are disconnected now we should be able to slide the motor out these look like cool superchargers on top of other motors stay tuned for that so after giving it some slices And pull it apart. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Which is the potentiometer, which looks like a volume control, and the circuit board. All we have to do is slice this and separate it from the wire and be careful. We don't want to break it at this phase. It's time to do some soldering. So that's what you're going to end up with. Potentiometer. Soldered on. Now these are the leads going to our motor. Now that we got the wires how we want them and as long as we want them, you can see a small positive on the motor. That's where we will be putting the red. And the black will go on the opposite side. All right, now that we have that soldered, we can slide our heat shrink up.
All right, we got her mounted in place. Well, sitting in place. We got her wired up. Plenty of slack. Now it's time to get our speed controller, battery. Let's see if I can get you zoomed in. The moment we move it off a of neutral, you see, now we have a speed controller. I'm turning it to the right. I'm going to turn it to the left, turn it to the right. Now we got it right in the neutral. Now if you want, this is where you want to glue it. If not, and you want to have a little volume knob on the side of your rig to control the winch, like a scale feature, that's cool as well. Here's a good example, guys. Right now, I have it hooked onto the steering. Now, because that's in the neutral position, I have full control. Notice there's a speed variable there, too. And it has no problem wheeling that, I don't know, one or two pound uh, soldering helper. All right, we're ready for testing. Let's plug the battery up and see how strong she is. Transmitter on. See if we can uh, recover this B36 6x6. All right. Winch time. I didn't expect that to happen. Let's try that. I didn't expect that to happen. So I'd say it's strong enough. I don't know about you guys. Well, this is testing phase, and we do see that it's lifting the back up and compressing the suspension. I don't know. Let's try it one more time. So the only thing I know to think to do is on the back bumper, which is right here. I'm gonna have to put um, some type of piston that shoots down and stop the rear end from compressing. Comment below and let me know what you think, but if it's a problem here, it's gonna be a problem trying to rescue someone. I guess I could always hit the gas, but as you see, that's, that's not what it's here to do. It's here to use the power of the winch. So that's what I'm gonna have to do on the back bumper. So, let's see what type of climbing action it can do now that we've seen the, the winch power. All right, let's see how good she is at crawling. Just do a quick little video crawling over these. See what it can do. Oh, that was like butter. Pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Stay tuned for part three. Now that we got it running, part three is going to be a running video. I can't wait.